Hello YouTube, I'm the Game Pegs 187 coming at you on Labor Day weekend with Strider, yes. The Nintendo fanboy fanboyism is over. As if there's any to begin with. I just happen to be going straight Nintendo. Well, since I figured out how to record footage on I I'm mean, playing this on an emulator. This is a game I do plan to own, so watch me suck. I got a little bit of practice in, but this game is just... <laughs> holy shit. God, that sounds awesome, this game. This is a launch title for the Genesis, and this really showed off what the system can do. This, I think it was a launch title. It, It's around that, but it was an arcade game. Similar to Sunset Riders, that was ported to the home consoles, and... Yeah. So, I'm doing this, and I, I probably could have did this, recorded this yesterday, just uploaded today, but... I was noticing a pretty good hangover. So, uh, combine... A random mixed drink... Uh, what they call it? it was called, they called their guys. I was hanging with, called it Jungle Juice. It was like the best type of drink where you can't even taste the alcohol. Yeah, combine that with the amount of beer I was drinking and the fact that I ain't eaten since about two in the afternoon. Yeah. So I've been playing a lot of games on uh, an emulator. I've been playing a lot of Vapor Trail, like Thunder Force 3. I just downloaded the Gunstar Heroes. So more, you know, shooter type games, which I think I, well, a side scroller, um, I would more have to do a shooter Saturday or something if I wanted to. But the basic ones I figured out to, once I found out to rent. Uh, convert the raw video into something else. It, like this is a, it records an AVI, and you have, and I uh, switched it to or converted it to Windows Media Video, and then I could load it up in my Sony Vegas, and uh, you know, editing software, and we're good. Never use Windows Movie Maker. It sucks, donkey dick. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that little uh, boss right there. That specific spot you can kneel, and you will not take a hit. Anyway, Monday Night Raw. There's only two things that can really come out of this that were just bullshit. I guess this was a really... I didn't watch it, but it was a really forgettable show, it seemed like. it. First of all, you have Cena no-selling everything. No-selling the fact that he got dropped on his head 16 times. No-selling the fact that Brock Lesnar conquered his ass. Nope. Comes out. He's back. He's good. They had a Legends panel with Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, and Shawn Michaels. Well, Shawn and Flair basically said that I don't know how Cena can win. Hogan it's like, oh no, brother, he came back at Extreme Rules. He got beat bad there, and he came back and won. Like, Hogan's saying that because he wants a match with Cena. Yes, Hogan wants to hobble his 61-year-old 16 back surgery ass out to the ring and try to have some kind of a match. The reason Steve Austin didn't take a match with Hulk Hogan, even though that would be that is one of the biggest matches that has never happened and never will happen, is because he couldn't get a good match out of Hogan. The last guy to get a good match out of Hogan was Shawn Michaels in 2005. And that's because Shawn oversold the shit out of everything. Because Hogan was already limited. Flash forward about six years and Hogan and Sting. And I feel bad for Sting because Sting can still fucking go. Give him the right guy. He had some great matches with Bully Ray. But Hogan, no way. Speaking of, no way we're going to get a, a fucking good match out of these two. Last week, I subtitled the, the Side Scroller Sunday, We Don't Want a Bella Feud. And this fucking proved it. Because, as I record this on Sunday, I don't do a, a, man, a Monday show at all. I, I 
Need to get back doing our Friday fight night. I might have to do some kind of like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or something like that. But we had a what, Lawler hosted a family reconciliation between Nikki and Bree, and what resulted is some of the worst goddamn acting you will ever see in your life. <sighs> More hokey than Tommy was so. Only. In not enjoyably hokey. This was excruciatingly bad. To quote one of my favorite lines from one of my favorite all times movies, this sucks more than anything that has ever sucked before. That is from Beavis and Butthead to America. The whole that movie opens up with a big dream sequence. They're both fucking Godzilla size. Beavis trying to score, yada yada yada. So Beavis flame breath, it's just hilarious, over the top. Oh yeah, Blech. time limit. Like I try to figure this boss out. Like the fuck. Anyway, wake. Beavis wakes up. He's shaking butthead, and he's like, "Look, TV's gone." And then you get by it looks, TV, the broken glass, out the window, yada yada, boom, 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 a couple times, like, whoa, I think I just figured something out, Beavis. <laughs> what? This sucks. <laughs> it really sucks. This sucks more than anything that's ever sucked before. We must find this butthole that took our TV. So basically this, we must find this butthole that ever came up with this segment. Oh, God, I mean, it is horrible. If you thought Dixie Carter trying to cut a promo on TV is bad, if you thought them trying to recreate Claire Lynch with better results, let alone the Claire Lynch storyline TNA was any good, first of all, get your fucking head examined. But this. I wish you died in the womb. That line. This segment should have been fucking aborted. In fact, whoever to be sure that conceived this segment should have been wearing a goddamn condom. Oh. Why? No one wants. Uh, the only reason the Bellas are back is because Brie married Daniel Bryan. Never mind that. What just clanked? Or my uh, one of my stands from my uh, game, Wii U gamepad just had my hand slipped out. And Nikki, who not only got a boob job, but is banging Fruity Pebbles John Cena. That's the only reason they're back. No. Uh, yep. Piss break match is what this is gonna be. This is gonna be this. Uh, this is gonna be it. Fucking what the hell's the next night of champions? We're gonna get Nikki versus Bree. We're gonna get a fucking horrible match. And it's gonna suck. Everyone's gonna be in the bathroom. I'm gonna be taking a piss or whatever. I'm gonna be just not giving a fuck. After SummerSlam, where we had two Divas matches, where we, where we, I actually gave a shit. I mean, albeit one of them was Brie versus Stephanie, there was at least a good build-up to that match. Was the match going to be halfway good? Maybe. It was. It was okay. Considering, one, it's Stephanie McMahon, who's not a wrestler by any stretch of the imagination. And Brie Bella, who can't wrestle to save her damn life. So, that's what's going on. I, I don't get it. What? No one fucking cares at all. Ugh. Bullshit TNA! Let's see. Ah, uh, what you haven't I done yet? I'm trying to go through this and trying to see here, uh... Uh, let's see, celebrity involvement. Oh yeah, VKM. I, I, have I talked about this one yet? I think I might have. Um, 
basically, WWE brought back the XNL 6, and so TNA started making fun of it. You know, Billy Gunn and Road Dog were in TNA at the time, so they came out. They were originally the James Gang, you know, BG and Kip James, and then they disappear. They come back as the Voodoo Kin Mafia, VKM, lay out the million dollar challenge. Vince, you know, Dixie thinking Vince is actually, actually going to accept the challenge, freezes a million dollars. We got a bunch of segments, one including the fact they brought four guys, male cheerleaders, making fun of the Spirit Squad, which I think at this point didn't even matter. Because I believe at this point the uh, Spirit Squad was pretty much gone. They had already been lost to tag titles. They were already the butt of every DX joke on Raw. There was a bounty one night in London where Coach put a $10,000 bounty on him, and Spirit Squad tried to cash, and two of them went for a match, and it was a series of slapstick. One dies into the underground, the under a dock of a bus where the luggage goes, gets hit with a trash can lid. One falls off a ladder. I don't get it. Oh my god. I know I talked about Kong and Bubba. Oh yeah, well might as well talk about the Claire Lynch story once I brought it up. Oh my god, okay, Claire Lynch. Following his match at Destination, uh, Destination X the previous year, Chris Daniels spent the rest of the year slowly turning heel by openly resenting Bobby Roode for winning the Bound for Glory series and AJ Styles for gaining far more high-profile opportunities in the company. Daniels finally turned heel except at the end of the year, accepted a gimmick... Er, no, hold on, do 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 and developed the gimmick of trying to stab random wrestlers with a screwdriver. He had a series of matches with AJ Styles in one of TNA's longest-running feuds. Now, here's the thing. You get really, really good matches out of Daniels and Styles. Beginning of the year, a Daniels claimed that AJ had a darker side. TNA didn't follow up on this till after AJ finished his uh, feud with Bobby Roode during the above-mentioned yeah, the wild card tag team tournament. Yeah, a bunch of random guys got tagged to get tagged up. Daniels approached Kaz with information on AJ during a, a match. A tag match with AJ. Kaz walked out. AJ lost the match. Kaz appeared reluctant to follow Daniels on the following episodes of In Impact, but he finally turned on AJ during their match against all odds. Kaz and Downs interrupted AJ's matches over the next few weeks. They flashed random documents and threatened to expose style secrets. Daniels eventually revealed a photo, revealed photos of, and video of AJ with Dixie Carter as they entered a motel room together, as well as a phone call between the two about a secret meeting they didn't want Dixie's husband, Serg, to hear about. On the last reveal, Serg, a non wrestler, laid out styles with one punch. This was never addressed again. So you have a non wrestler, Dixie Carter's husband, Knock out AJ Styles in one punch. And then they don't give a shit about it anymore. TNA logic, everybody. Dixie didn't acknowledge this angle. Despite her constant presence on Impact to promote Slammiversary, at least not until a recorded phone call was played. When that happened, she stormed out on the stage and screamed for production to stop playing it. Kaz and Daniels won the tag tiles at Sacrifice and dropped him... The belts a month later to AJ and Kurt Angle, one month later at Slammiversary to up the feud. Stakes in the feud, despite being champs, that Kurt had virtually no involvement in the feud, and RJ hardly had AJ hardly ever wore his title belt. Angle and Styles dropped the tiles back to Kaz and Daniels two weeks later. AJ and Dixie decided to go public with their big secret, while AJ tried to convince Dixie not to reveal it. Despite initially wanting to go public with it in the first place, a random woman entered the ring. She identified herself as a pregnant drug addict trying to get clean with the help of AJ and Dixie without anyone finding out. And a rage Daniels and uh, Cows rushed to the ring and got laid out by AJ as Impact went off the air. 
Fans responded with obvious confusion as who the pregnant junkie was and why they should give a fuck about her. What about that mysterious call, uh, telephone call that Daniels recorded? He had edited a t uh, call between AJ and Dixie talking about planning Serg's surprise birthday party. TNA did a whole article dedicated to it. On their website, the de this detail is never mentioned again, and Serg would never apologize for AJ to AJ for cleaning his clock. Let's see, at the end of the next episode of Impact, Daniels told Dixie that AJ had fathered the junkie's baby. TNA felt proud enough of this angle to praise Eric Bischoff for coming up with such a compelling twist and rewarded him with a raise. Despite largely negative fan reactions on Twitter and some of TNA's lowest ratings for the big reveal segment, in later weeks, the pregnant junkie, Claire Lynch, turned heel when she joined with Daniels and accused AJ of fathering her child. AJ claimed she didn't know if he had even had sex with her and called her a foot. But Claire provided an evidence for her claim, pictures of her on top of a passed out AJ lying in bed that suggested she had date rape styles after a wild night of partying. <laughs> Mother of God. That suggestion is he, okay, AJ challenged Janice to imagine which AJ would own up to following Claire's baby if he lost, he but took but take a paternity test if he won. Yes, we know that sounds stupid no matter how you read it. He won the match and took the paternity test. One week let's see, one week Claire cut a promo after arriving at the impact zone during which she was smoking. Yes, she was supposed to be pregnant and she was smoking on camera during a nationally televised sh uh, televised show. Suspension of disbelief, what the fuck is that shit? TNA abruptly ended the story when Julia Riley, the actress who played Claire Lynch, left the company after fans found some of her other acting jobs on YouTube and left harsh comments on her work. On the episode of Impact, where Daniels and Kaz would have revealed the paternity test results, Claire's attorney, played by Janice Carter, Dixie's mother, came out and read a statement that Claire admitted to conspiring with Daniels and Kaz to blackmail AJ over a pregnancy she never had in the first place. Photos surfaced of Miss Riley at her day, j uh, day job playing olive oil at the Popeye Ride in Universal Studios. TNA never even left their own backyard. TNA never even left their own backyard to look for someone to play Claire. It was so bad that despite giving Kaz as Kazarian and Downs as bad influence, it won the 2012 Gooker Award by a fairly wide margin. Yeah. So, I think I'm just going to throw in some random footage here. I don't know what. I'm just going to find something. <laughs> but, yeah. Claire Lynch. Good God, was it bad. Anyway, you can find me. I'm going to link all my stuff down below. My Instagram, Twitter. The links to our PGRF, uh, where I'm at in various forums links to my uh, podcast I do. You can also find me on Slamcast every Friday night at 8pm Eastern. We talk wrestling. We hate Vince Russo. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so, that is gonna do it. I'm gonna finish this, render it, upload it, and I'm getting back to Mario Kart 8. Still trying to get those 10,000 coins. It's getting there, but it's slow going. Anyway, Pegasus, out.